Hello everyone and welcome to video number 28 in our survival game series done by Brackies. I am the CEO of Brackies and in this video we are going to be importing three new weapons to our game uh, made by some cool people I'm gonna talk about in a sec. And uh, this is what they look like, so here you go. And um, so we're gonna be importing them and we're going to be building the base of our uh, updated uh, melee system uh, basically it's gonna allow the weapons to move with the animation of, uh, of our arms and it's also going to be optimized uh, for the upcoming inventory system uh, so that's really awesome so uh, basically let me just start out with explaining the idea of what we are going to be doing uh, so again, uh, I excuse my drawing skills, uh, but here we go, in paint. <laughs> um, the base is this, uh, so this is a top view of our player capsule, just ignore the weapon for now. Uh, and we can see the two, two arms going out here. Uh, they are kind of squarey. <laughs> okay, so we have this uh, point on the right hand arm, and this is part of the rig. Uh, and the rig is basically the skeleton that allows for uh, the arms to animate and that's what I made in Blender. And uh, inside of the rig or the skeleton I made an empty game object that would always uh, follow the base of our hand. And so we can actually parent uh, weapons to this game object and then it will automatically follow the animation. Uh, so that's what that is. And uh, in order for us to do this, uh, we would like to instantiate weapons to this point whenever we pick something up or equip something from, uh, from our inventory and such. So uh, we would like to just be able to instantiate in, the, um, in basically a, a zero position and a zero rotation. So um, we don't have to uh, adjust the position or rotation of the individual weapons. And in order to do this, I had to center the pivot point or anchor point in all of the weapons. And what, that's what I've done here. So the anchor point on all of the weapons uh, is where we want to hold it. Uh, so that should all be aligned. And so we can have all the weapons uh, just simply snap onto there. And uh, that's the base of what we are going to be doing today. So uh, first of all, I would like uh, if you could download the survival game assets pack from our website. Uh, if you want to use the arms uh, or the, uh, the the arms or the weapons I'm using, uh, if you're un unaware of, on how to do this, you can go ahead and watch our bonus video showing just that. Okay, so open up the folder, go under imports, and then under weapons we see a folder called old weapons. These were the uh, the two old weapons, the mace and the sword. Uh, we're just going to be ignoring those as they are kind of outdated and they were just placeholder art. And uh, let's start by importing the iron uh, mace. And uh, that's that one. And this was made by Samin Iben from Blend Control. And if you're looking for some great free modeling work, um, He's, uh, he's really awesome, check him out. Uh, so let's start by importing that. And uh, we have both a blend file and a FBX file. I'm just going to be importing the blender file uh, because this allows me to quickly open it up through Unity and make changes. Uh, but if you don't have Blender, you can just use the FBX. You'll get the same result. So let's open up Unity and just uh, navigate to the right folder here so that we have our player. And then under our imports, we can go to the weapons and then we will make a new folder, create folder and call this old weapons. Then select the sword and the mace and just drag them under the old weapons. Now let's make uh, another folder and call this iron mace double click it and then we can just drag in the iron mace blend file and the three textures and there we have it awesome uh, actually i'll quickly rename this to mace handle diffuse and then mace head diffuse 
I just like naming it diffuse because there are plenty of different texture types and these are diffuse. Awesome. Actually, the talker is not only, but that, that we'll just ignore that for now. Okay, so now we can just uh, drag in the iron mace and uh, see if the scale is proper. It's not. It's a little bit too big. So let's select the uh, iron mace in the inspector or in the project pane and then go to the inspector and change the scale factor down to let's try 0 0.7. Let's try that. I really don't know. That's still way too big. So let's change this to 0 0.3. That doesn't look too bad. Let's try to move it up here. We'll just go with that for now and then we can make adjustments later. Okay, so what we are going to do now is we are going to apply the texture. So just hit F to focus on it. Then right click the animator and hit remove component. Or you can just go to the iron maze, go under animations and uncheck import animation. Hit apply. Go to rig, generic and hit none, apply. Go and do model, and then I want to, uh, and this is this is a matter of preference. You can easily import the normals, so you can calculate them, and uh, it's really different whether uh, what looks best. Um, actually, I think for this one, we are going to import them. Uh, I think that looks a little bit better, but again, that's something we can adjust along the way. Uh, now let's select the iron maze, and now we can start dragging in some textures. So on the maze handle. We'll drag in the mace handle diffuse and change this to completely white. On the mace head, we'll drag in the mace head diffuse, completely white. And the same with the stand, drag it in, completely white. That's awesome. Uh, but maybe for the mace head, we would like it to be a bit more shiny. Uh, so if that's the case, you could go ahead and change the mace head shader type from diffuse to specular. And now we can get that specular detail on just that part of the maze. And that's why we have split it up like this. And you can, of course, adjust the shininess and such variables to see how it reflects light and how it influences. And so that's pretty awesome. Now, I, I, I like this a lot. So let's now begin to actually add this to the arms. So what we can do now is we can select our arms, hit uh, F to focus on them, then go under the arms, and now we will start uh, browsing the the rig, so the armature. And there are going to be a lot of game objects under this, but uh, you really can just ignore all of them except for the ones I'm using here. So arm armature, master, inner arm right, because we want to equip to the right hand, arm right, hand right, and then the hold right. And that's, uh, that's the one we're going to be using. Though you will notice if you just drag the maze under the hold right, and then just zero out the position and the rotation, it's not really looking too great. So what we can do is we can make an empty game object under the hold right that will be called melee and we can make uh, and we can rotate that and so we can uh, have all the weapons be rotated. If you don't understand this yet, that's completely fine. I'm sure you will figure it out along the way. So let's make an empty game object by either going to game object, create empty or press control shift N. Let's call this melee and this is basically going to be a root for the whole melee system. Let's drag it under the hold. And let's drag the iron mace under the melee. Now let's make sure the melee is centered, 0, 0, 0, 0. And also that the iron mace is centered on the melee, 0, 0. Oops, that was 9. 0, 0, 0, and 0. Now we can take the melee object and just rotate it. And if you want, you can also snap by holding down control while rotating. And this can just allow for some pretty nice snapping. And now we can go in and fine tune this. So I would like it to be more to the right. It's very, uh, very much at an angle right now. And maybe a bit back like this. 
zoom in some more so we can see what we're doing. Move it a bit, a bit upward and a bit out. And that doesn't look too bad. Let's see how it looks in game. So go into game and then hit play. And we can see that the maze is behind the hand, even though in our scene, it looks just right. And that's because uh, if you have watched tutorial 20 number, number 26, I believe, uh, where we take care of weapon clipping, uh, we made a secondary camera that will always make sure our hands are drawn so that they don't, won't clip through other objects if collided. Um, but we uh, we have to add our, our weapon here to that layer. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into melee and then change the layer to draw always and let's say yes change children and this will also change our iron maze uh, or anything else we have under the melee object. Uh, though I'm pretty sure if you drag something under there now, you'll still have to change the layer. Okay, so now let's have a look again. Hit play. And that looks really awesome, I think. Uh, we could maybe scale down the maze a bit to see more of the top, but that's really up to you. I'm just going to leave it here for now. Okay, cool. So next up, we are going to import yet another weapon. So go back to the weapons folder, hit create folder, and then let's call this axe. And this axe was made by uh, one of the uh, guys that were working on your game, a really talented modeler called Eigel. And uh, we're going to have a link to his portfolio as soon as we get it up, but that's the one there. Uh, so let's go under the um, weapons here, under the axe. And then select the blend file and the axe diffuse. And just drag it under the axe there. Let's double click it and there we have it. Uh, so let's drag this in and we can see this is really, really big. So let's just go ahead and select it in the project pane. Change the scale factor to something like 0 0.09. Let's try with that. Just guessing. Uh, where we have it, we have it there. So let's focus on it. That wasn't too bad, actually. I kind of like that scale. It might, it's still too big, yeah. So let's go and do 0 0.06. And uh, that looks pretty good, maybe 0 0.05. It's all right if the weapons are a little bit too small. It looks better uh, when you can see more of the weapon, I think. But again, it's up to you. It's a matter of preference, of course. So now select it in the project pane. Uh, then you can see. Let's see if we want this to be automatically imported. I think we would like to calculate this one. Yeah, I kind of like that better. But we'll see when we once we get the textures on. Go to rig, none. And let's just hit try again, then go to animation and uncheck import animation and hit apply. Okay, great. So now that we have those set up, let's uh, get it to fit our hand there. Uh, so now we can just go ahead and drag it under our melee. And we can remember to change the layer to draw always. Then go to the position, zero out the variables. Also rotation, zero them out. And now we should see that they align, though I see that are a small problem here. And uh, what we can do is we can simply take our melee object here and just rotate it that way. So now it should be pointing forwards. And when we import our knife, the blade should be too. Great. So you can see that these weapons automatically align. And so if we were to disable the iron maze, it's not looking too bad. Of course, he's never going to be holding it just perfect, but I think that is really close. Okay, so now let's drag on the diffuse texture and change this to completely white. And there we have it. Now we have our axe in game also. And uh, that's awesome. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's just quickly see how it looks in game. Not too bad. 
Uh, also, you might want to see that these follow any kind of animation we're doing. So if we go into our animator, you will be able to see the setup we made in Mechanim in the last two tutorials. And if we hit play, we can do stuff like, uh, whoops, this is not working. So what we can do is we can go, this just might be the wrong controller I've selected. So let's go into the arms, hit the arms controller there much better. And also remember that um, Mechanim has a box. So let's just uncheck apply remote motion. And now we can see the uh, animation playing. And when we hit the hit one, you can see it starts swinging the weapon. The same with hit two, that looks great. And when we run, it also follow the hands. So that's awesome. And uh, that is working. Great, so now under the melee, uh, let's import the last weapon. So let's go and do imports, weapons, and then create a new folder. Call this knife. And uh, the knife was made by me. <laughs> and I am really, really good at modeling. Um, uh, I think it's the best one, definitely. Uh, okay, so the knife here, uh, select the blend file and the knife diffuse texture. And let's just drag it under the knife folder. Double click the knife folder to open it up. There we have it. And then that's, uh, I don't know about the tangents let we'll, yet. We'll see about that. Uh, the skill factor is probably off though. So let's try to drag it in there. No, that's right. Kidding. Uh, okay, so we can just bump down the scale factor quite a bit. Uh, let's try 0 0.1. That doesn't look too bad. Let's focus on it. Guess we'll have to have him hold it before we can really see. But that's actually not too bad. So uh, for some reason, this already has the texture applied, but you can of course go ahead and just drag it on there. Change this to completely white. Select it in the project pane, go on the rig, select none, hit apply. Animations, uncheck import animation, and the model there. Uh, okay, so I think the tangents are actually not too bad, though I don't really like this shattering by the edge of the blade. So let's go ahead and hit calculate, and that should get rid of it. Yes, it did. Great. Now we can go ahead and just drag it under the melee and you know the progress, just uh, stir out the position, stir out the rotation and now it should look just right. And if we disable the axe, we can have a look at it in game. And uh, whoops, we forgot one thing, select the knife, go to layer, draw always and now it should look just right. Actually, this might be a little bit too low on the hand. So of course, what you can do, because this is a blend file, is you can just double click it and it will open it up in Blender. And that's awesome. So now we can just move it up a tiny bit in edit mode, which won't affect our pivot. Hit save. And this is of course done in the um, version you're downloading. And now it should be perfectly centered. Yeah. There we go. So that was basically it for this video, guys. Let's just quickly maybe go ahead and make some prefabs out of these if you want to. Um, I'm not going to do that, but you can do it if you want. And uh, in the next one, we are going to be uh, affecting the animation uh, through scripting. So we are going to be learning how to uh, get this to play um, in game. And uh, we, I'm also thinking about doing some fall damage tutorials and maybe uh, and then of course the inventory system and upcoming is also some more combat and uh, there's a lot of exciting things on the way. Don't know when, don't know how, but uh, it will get there sometime. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.